when you think of the deadliest animals on earth big cats are probably the first thing that comes to mind and honestly it makes sense there's some incredibly powerful animals that beckons our chaos driven minds and makes us wonder how one of these big cats would fare against something like a gorilla or even a straight up grizzly bear and you know what they've been aura farmed enough throughout humanity's existence and their hype managed to spawn one of the most heated debates in all of history tiger versus lion but we're not going to go into that in this video but besides all that i've got some really unique and fascinating facts about big cats and no i'm not about to be like whoa did you know tigers are orange nah none of that waste of time nonsense i'll be talking about very obscure facts that even scientists sleep on like did y'all know that all the big cats besides lions have a false eye pattern on the back of their ears why is that what makes lions unique well i explained that later on in this video so make sure to stick around to find out but before we begin this mind-boggling chaos we're on a road to 100k and it would really mean a lot to me if y'all subscribed like this video and dropped a comment but enough of that it's time to lock in people because we're gonna be starting with light facts but the further we go the weirder and more obscure it gets trust me you'll want to stick around for the last few okay so first up y'all ready number one how do we even know what a big cat is have you ever thought why cougars and cheetahs are not considered big cats well how we classify them is actually surprisingly debatable but simply there are two methods number one is genetics basically anything in the panthera genus which includes lions tigers leopards jaguars and snow leopards that's good and everything but then there's also another way we do it which is any large cats that have a two-piece hyoid bone that enables them to roar yeah so the other way we determine it is if the cats can roar and by that definition we exclude snow leopards so it really depends on which expert you ask for me personally i classify big cats via the two-piece hyoid bone sorry to the snow leopard but that's just me some scientists may say differently and that's cool and everything but yeah sorry to confuse you guys right off the start but let's move on to number two and that is male leopards often have a large neck flap but why is that well other than showing off its fitness level it's theorized that the neck flap is due to hunting warthogs and other low slung animals that like to ram in slash charge essentially it would kind of act as a barrier slash buffer to the neck region when hopping onto ramming types of animals and an added bonus is that it also helps protect them against claw strikes from their rifles as well so kind of a win-win for that double chin oh and speaking of necks let's move on to number three which is did you know the mane of the lion's primary purpose isn't for fighting but actually for mate attraction and to appear more domineering yeah studies show that injuries during fights between lions don't really differ between the body and the main portion and in fact lions tend to actually target the rear body more in fights now yes the mane still does act as pseudo armor in fights don't get me twisted but its primary purpose is for mate attraction and to be more intimidating oh and speaking of lions and leopards the next fact number four is actually really interesting did y'all know that leopards are more closely related to lions than they are to jaguars despite both leopards and jaguars looking very similar to one another yeah i bet you didn't see that one coming oh and speaking of large animals and dangerous relatives the next fact is guess what the closest living relative to tigers are snow leopards and vice versa all right those were quick and easy but let's cool it down with the family stuff for right now and talk about something really unique check this next fact out number six the lion's unique tail have you ever noticed that a lion's tail is different from all the other big cats it has tufts of fur at the end of its relatively bony tail but why is that well two reasons actually first being communication for other pride members especially when hunting it helps them stand out from the tall grass to know each other's location and the second reason is surprisingly for swatting away flies slash bugs the tufted tail ends are actually found in a lot of african herbivores for that bug swatting reason as well but since we did talk about the lion how about we move on to its rival the tiger and at number seven we have the use for the tiger's stripes have you ever wondered what the stripes were used for i mean they look cool and everything but did you know a tiger stripe pattern helps break up their body silhouette in forests now even though it might stand out to us most of their prey such as deer have diachromatic vision they're essentially colorblind to orange and having one continuous coat color would make them stand out in contrast to their forest environment okay now while tigers are busy blending into their background like orange assassins let's talk about the next fact about a cat that doesn't just hunt smart it feeds smart 
And in at number 8, we have the Jaguar specific kill site selection for large prey. When a Jaguar brings down big prey, they often move the carcass to a slightly elevated slash uneven location before feeding. But why is that? Well, besides the obvious concealment aspect, the uneven terrain provides leverage points for Jaguars to break apart limbs or open body cavities more efficiently. Essentially, because of their kind of small-ish size, any leverage really helps when they use their mouth as the main cutting tool. Oh, and speaking of Jaguars dismembering prey, next fact, number nine, is that Jaguars often go for skull bites and can open up their mouth at a much wider angle than any other big cats. Oh, and speaking of going for the head, here comes the next fact, number 10, which is the specific location male lions kill cubs when taking over a pride. So if y'all didn't know, when lions take over a new pride, they often go out and kill cubs of the previous male. Yeah, they really pulled an Anakin when taking over another pride. But a lesser known detail is about the specific injuries observed on the cubs. Studies of skeletal remains show a high amount of puncture marks on the top of the cubs head. Basically, male lions, when they do go after cubs, take a page out of Thor's book and go for the head. All right, but enough of that. On to the next one, number 11, which is leopards have locking ankle slash wrist joints that can rotate up to 180 degrees. And that is actually unique among big cats. This essentially enables them to have great grip strength, specifically for climbing trees and have great control when leaping onto animals. And can you believe it? Just like that, we're down to our last four facts after this. But while we're speaking of leopards, coming in at number 12 is the leopard's rosette patterns change with its habitat. Now, while rosette patterns are unique to each leopard, a lesser known aspect is how the density and size of these rosettes can vary significantly based on the leopard's habitat. Leopards living in dense forests, such as the Javan leopard, often have smaller, more tightly packed rosettes. This is essentially because of better camouflage in the speckled light. The leopards in more open and arid environments, such as African leopards, tend to have larger and more widely spaced rosettes. Again, for camouflage. But okay, enough of that. Next one, number 13, is really cool. That being the unique shape of a big cat's pupils compared to a house cat's. While big cats have more rounded pupils, unlike the vertical slits of domestic cats, there's actually a few reasons as to why that is. Vertical pupils tend to retain more depth focus on what's directly in front of them, which causes the horizontal edges to be kind of blurred. Essentially, those vertical slits are good for house cats because it helps them hone in on small targets like mice on a grounded surface. Basically, the more oval-like pupils of the big cat and so they can see their huge swath of land better and focus on larger prey targets like deer or warthogs. Also, the other reason for the difference is due to big cats wanting to maximize the light intake across a wider field of vision. And this is especially crucial for hunting at night. But speaking of advantages, we finally arrived at the fact that we mentioned in the beginning, which is the big cats false eyes in the back of their ears. Now, as I mentioned in the intro, all the big cats seem to possess them besides lions. But why is that? Well, quick disclaimer, okay? Scientists still don't know exactly why, but the prevailing theory is that the false eyes are developed on more ambush-driven solo creatures to avoid being snuck up on. Essentially, if you are a tiger, for example, animals such as other male tigers, elephants, bears, and even buffalo can't surprise them because those animals move pretty quietly without notice. But this is especially especially true for deterring big cats in their territory because once again the cats that have the special ears tend to sneak attack and ambush rather than have head-on confrontations especially in fights with other members of their own species they're trying to take any advantage they can get but in contrast lions tend to lack those false eye patterns because they not only live in prides and in more open areas but the backs of the lion's ears are mainly black for communication when hunting with other pride members so they can see them in the tall grass essentially like a locational marking. But for the big cats that do have the false size markings, other theories that aren't as strong but still kind of persist are for communication as cubs and for hostility. But all right, and speaking of tigers standing out, we're down to our last fact. And this one might totally shock some of you because it's a lie constantly propagated in the media. Number 15, Siberian tigers being classified as the largest big cat is completely false. The average wild male Siberian tiger is actually smaller than a South African lion, according to current scientific research. Yeah, so there's a lot of misconceptions that comes with these sites that claim these cats 
cats can weigh up to 600 plus pounds. And if you listen and read carefully, it says those words up to, not that they average that weight. Now using that terminology, I can say humans weigh up to 1000 pounds, but when you say that's normal, no. So the term propagates a false sense of belief in the Siberian tiger's size. In actuality, various modern estimates put their average size range Listen, I said average for a wild male to be around 353 to 420 pounds with the mean weight, according to this research article that measured 44 Siberian tigers showing to be around 383 pounds. Yeah, that's a lot smaller than the 600 plus pound number. Some of y'all are used to hearing because remember that number refers to the term up to and in reality, those that even come close to that legendary weight are obese, unhealthy tigers in captivity and are very much exceptional. Definitely not something you'd see in the wild on average. Okay, we're good here. So yeah, anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the facts and found them interesting. I'd appreciate it if y'all subscribed, like this video, check out the rest of my content.